Joining us now for a closer look at what this credit downgrade might mean, our Lee Gallagher, assistant managing editor of Fortune magazine and uh, Wall Street Journal markets columnist Kelly Evans. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this, seems, this seems rather political. Uh, is it is, so? Is is it more political or more economic? You could say that. Um, it, 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 there's so much politics behind this, but politics in the sense that uh, the main reason S and P did this is because of our inability to get things done. Literally, the wording in the press release when they issued the downgrade was our ability to make policy has been weakened. So this is not about us not being able to pay our debt. The U.S. will always be able to pay our debt. We can print money. So it's not about that. It's about our, 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 this brinksmanship that has led us to a point where we can't get anything done. And that's that's had this impact on our credit rating. Right, but Kelly, so, so Kelly, our, our, our credit rating is now below that of Liechtenstein's. <laughs> um, and, and, and with all due respect to our friends in Liechtenstein, I, I, I think that surprises a lot of people. Does it surprise you? Well, S&P actually had telegraphed that this was coming. They said, look, if we don't get, for example, a $4 trillion reduction in the U.S. deficit projection over the next decade, we're probably going to go ahead with this downgrade, regardless of, of whether the debt ceiling itself is actually raised. And so to, to that point, people on Wall Street have more or less known this was coming. And this is just one of the three credit rating agencies. And I think it's important for retail investors to keep in mind that while there might be some short-term knock-on reaction, while we might see some disruption to money market funds, we'll get more bad news on Monday as related securities are downgraded, it doesn't actually, it's not expected to have necessarily a long-term effect. And remember, rates on U.S. government debt, which are supposed to be the big thing where we see this play out, have been sinking rapidly over the last couple of weeks. We're, we're borrowing, we're paying 2.5% for 10 years. That's hardly a sign that people are expecting those costs to suddenly skyrocket. Can, can we talk for a second about the fact that S&P acknowledged there was a $2 trillion mistake in this? <laughs> that, and the Treasury went to them and said, look, at you, th th there's a problem here. They said, we're going to do this anyway? Yeah, that's in the category of you literally, tr truth is stranger than fiction. I mean, that, that was unbelievable, especially when you think about the fact that during the financial crisis, the ratings agency, uh, all three of them, basically you know, missed everything. They were issuing right, top-tier right. ratings to mortgage-backed securities. And so this, this also could be a, 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 a gambit to redeem themselves in a way. But I think Kelly makes a great point. This is only S&P. They're acting alone. Right. Um, these downgrades have a lot more heft if all three of them do it at once. So. Any indication this comes from Fitch or Moody's anytime soon? You know, they've, they've laid out their principles a little bit differently with regard to what action they might take. So it will be interesting now to see if a Moody's or a Fitch follows in, maybe with regards to municipal debt or something, says we now see a reason that we might want to lower some of those ratings. You know, they, they're put in an interesting position. S&P has been the most aggressive on this all along. And, and it's interesting. They're... S&P is almost trying to say it's, it's not political. You know, we're going to resist that pressure from Washington. <laughs> not and really, at all. Really go out there and, and sort of maintain what we see fit here in terms of the credit rating. But, but in so doing, it still looks political because we're now on par with, with the ratings. You know, you still have France. You still have Germany. You have other countries like that with a AAA rating who can't even print their own money. So it, it does look a little bit strange in terms of the broader global perspective. And regardless of whether it is more political or more economic, it does take a while to earn these ratings back once you lose that AAA, correct? It does. And, and you know, we're double. AA plus, I think the expectation was that we were going to go to just double A, so we're one notch ahead of what people expected. Yeah. Uh, but, but you know, the outlook is negative. And then don't forget about just simply whatever the mechanics are, the pure psychological impact of this. After the two days that we've seen in the market, um, yeah. with Thursday's 500 point drop, Friday's wild ride, uh -huh. things are, are very prone to, to skittishness. Right and now. Kelly, let's finish with that if we could. Uh, looking ahead to Monday, what happens? Yeah, so Monday we're going to get more bad news from S&P as they downgrade related securities, Fannie, Freddie, that sort of thing. So so again, we will see some impact on in markets. Investors can't really say what it's going to be, but I expect it to be more of a short-term move. You know, you can look back to other countries like Japan, like Australia, that have lost their AAA rating, and it hasn't really been a, a game changer. You could argue, in fact, this is telling us something that we've already known. But Liechtenstein still has it, so that's good. <laughs> We're above New Zealand, though. There's that. <laughs> Lee Gallagher and Kelly Evans, thank you both for your time. Thanks, Ray.